What's the crack, lads? Welcome back to another player pack review. Today we are taking a look at Paimonte or Juventus as they are known in real world football. And look, as I've always kind of said by uh, with these player pack reviews, lads, right? A lot of the time you're kind of looking at them and you're thinking, are there players in here that are going to change my squad, right? So you kind of have to look at it through a different lens. If you are starting out, if you've downloaded a game in the last month, a lot of these players are going to improve your squad. If you've been playing the game for the last year, you're, you're not really going to be looking at these guys unless you're a fan of the club, a fan of the players, or if there's one of the players in there that might potentially be a better version of a player that you already have, such as Danilo, or if there's a version of the player that you missed out on before that is kind of like a beast or a meta player, right? Depending on how you play the game. And if you're just looking to build a proper squad, standard GP, you can get a lot of these players that are that are probably much better than these cars that are here, right? So just depends whether you want to speed up the process of getting a fairly competitive team or not. We also have the Italian Deluxe. We will do that as well. But for now, we are going to do Juventus, right? So the three highlight players, Locatelli, Vlahovic, and Moratti, I would, I would probably say that there's probably better versions of these there, um, especially because you can train them up yourself in a little bit of a different way. But we're going to kind of gloss over uh, maybe three or four of these players that I don't think are really worth uh, spending too much time on. First up, we have the youngster Moretti. This guy, I know there's massive potential uh, there with him. I know that there's high hopes for him. He is a beast of a player, and he's got great potential as a future star. But this card is a very average card, lads. I mean, usually with the younger players, you know, they have, like, higher levels than 26, 27. But this guy is just locked at 26 levels. He goes to mid-80s and everything. You know, speed, acceleration, tight dribbling, tight possession, all that sort of stuff. But he's just a very average card because of his player skills. And, of course, because he does not have unwavering form, and he's on C rating. So for him, I think he's a bit of a miss. We also have Chesney. I don't really spend too much time on goalkeepers, lads, especially goalkeepers that don't have long throw. Chesney does have unwavering form, which is grand, but the rest of his stats are just not up to par with what the best goalkeepers have, especially when you can get, like, Oliver Kahn for free with eFootball points. You can get, you know, Donnarumma for pretty much, like, one event being cleared. You can get 300,000 very easily in the game and get Donnarumma with a little bit more, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand GP. You can get a top-class end-game goalkeeper. So, for me, he's also a bit of a miss. And then we also have Benucci. This guy is just too slow, lads. I know that slowness doesn't really come into it with the way that, you know, any player can uh, be caught up. Um, but I do think that this guy is just a little bit too slow for what else is out there. Yeah, he's good in the air. He's got some excellent player skills, but he does only go to 21 levels. And I think that as a buildup with that pace um, and the, the lack of kind of, I would say the lack of you know, him being a destroyer, I think that if you are going to be playing a build-up player, you need to be very, very sure of who you're playing in that build-up role if you're not using a destroyer. Um, I know that he does have really, you know, top-class skills, and him and Shalini are kind of two players, even though Shalini is not playing for Juve anymore. They're very similar players that they're just so solid on the ball. Um, we also uh, will take a look at Kostic as well quite quickly. This guy is a very kind of unique player in that he's one of the best passers in the game, one of the best crossers in the game. If you don't have Bex, he's like a left-footed David Beckham, um, and he is a fantastic player that can shoot as well, even though his finishing uh, stats aren't that high, right? He does have standard form. He is on C rating, so that will probably turn you off a little bit, but he does have a lot of really key stats. If you are looking to train him up, as we will take a look over here on eFootballDB, he does have some insane stats that go up, you know, with that 91 lofted pass, and you're going to have pinpoint crossing with that uh, outside curler and low lofted pass as well. 86 speed and acceleration, 92 stamina, very, very balanced to player. But I do still think that when you are playing, taking a player like that, you have to be playing crosses into the box because he's not fast enough or good enough, I think, as a winger, not tricky enough as a winger with the dribbling stats. And, you know, if you are going to be playing him as kind of like a, a wing back, even, um, I do think that you need to have a very specific formation for that. So moving on to the players that I actually do recommend, right? Well, the first one we're going to take a look at is going to be a player that everybody wants and everybody probably should have if they're looking for a very solid right back, center back hybrid that can play pretty much anywhere across the back line, left back, right back or center. And of course, you can also kind of put him on a man marking duty as well. Um, he has blocker and interception, which is very rare for an offensive fullback. He has unwavering form. He's on A rating. Now, we will take a look at the Brazilian edition of Danilo, which is widely regarded as one of the best players that they released for a right back. Because this guy does have insane stats if you are going to go defensive with him. Like if we're going to go, um, 
because he's an offensive fullback, if we are going to go in a central uh, back position, we do need to boost up the defending a good bit, right? If you do want a defending guide on Danilo, uh, I think he is one of the best players that they have released. Uh, he does have some really, really good stats. But I personally think that having him as a right back is probably the route to go. Um, because he's got fairly good dribbling straight off the rip, you don't need to upgrade that too much. And he has got speed, acceleration and stamina to be able to get up and down the line. So it does depend on how you want to play him. But I always say it's very, very, very useful to have a player that can play right back or left back with blocker and interception and fighting spirit. I mean, you will notice a difference when they are tracking players, if they're man marking, if they're just trying to shut down that wing attack. Most players don't attack out wide anyway, so you can turn that to your advantage by having a very solid defensive player that can cover manually a lot of ground that's left by the center backs, right? So that's one thing to take a look at there as well. We also have Pogba, right? Pogba, and sorry, let's just to, just to look at the Brazilian edition of this uh, Danilo, who's widely regarded as one of, the one of the best that they released. He did have 33 levels, um, but the cards are identical. So this Brazilian edition is still better, but they are identical with the stats. So just to keep that in mind. We also have Paul Pogba. Pogba is slow acceleration wise, but if you are going to be playing him as a kind of a deep sit in CMF, just kind of like Pirlo-esque, then he's going to be breaking up tackles, if he's going to be just one touch passing, if he's going to be spreading the ball around, getting a few shots off with his player skills, he is quite decent. Um, the one thing obviously with Pogba, as you can imagine with his form in real life, he does have inconsistent form. So that to me is a bit of a, a, bit of a, a red flag for him, um, even though he's on B rating, this week as well with the live update rating, right? So just to keep that in mind, and that's why I think he's somebody that you'll you'll probably just need to be a bit a bit careful of if you do actually end up signing him. Now he does go up to a 93 overall, but I definitely do think that he's more of a um a kind of a I don't know, like a player that you probably are going to skip out on. If you get him and you train him up, yeah, he'll do a job for you, especially he's very strong in midfield. He kind of behaves like a DMF in midfield. But I for me, I think that he's not really really worked it as a box to box, which is a very important position. We also have a Locatelli, and we've got two more to round us off. Locatelli, he's on B form, and he's probably, to be honest, he's probably the pick of the pack, lads. He's a very, very, very good player. Where we were looking at Moretti um, as a youngster, he kind of has everything that you could possibly want apart from blocker if you're playing him as a DMF. But obviously, because he's an orchestrator, you are going to be playing him in a slightly different role. So unwavering form on B rating, which is quite decent. He has interception and sliding tackle. He has one touch pass, true passing and low lofted pass with way to pass. Beautiful passing skills and abilities. And when we do train him up, we are going to see that he goes to a 94, 95 rated version as a DMF. This is just the version we have trained him up here. We've really gone to town on his defensive stats. If you're looking for a deep line orchestrator, that's a bit of a mix up from an anchorman. This is your guy. I mean, I know he's got 70 acceleration and balance, but that won't really come into it with the rest of his card here. 85 passing, 86 lofted pass. The rest has gone into defense. Like, we don't, we actually don't even need that much defense, lads, to be honest. Um, he's not an anchorman. He's not a destroyer. We are going to be playing him in a, a different role. So we could go 80 with the tight possession. We could also go a little bit more with the dexterity if we wanted to bring him up on par with some of the better players that are there. 75 acceleration or whatever it is, um, so I do think that he is definitely a worthy uh, DMF slash CMF hybrid if you're looking for something different, and then last but not least, we do have Lahavich, this guy is a goal poacher, which is always good, he has a long range drive, first time shot, fighting spirit, heading, and dipping shot and knuckle shot, which is always nice, he goes to a 96 overall, which is quite decent for a center forward, now I have a, a different version of this card, um, but it's a very similar version of this card, uh, which was available for free as far as I know, if I'm not mistaken. And look, I haven't really given him a massive chance at the club yet because I've always had better players than him there. Uh, you know, whether it's Romario, whether it's Collar, um, whoever it is. But I do feel like this guy is a little bit uh, of kind of, he's, he's kind of slept on. He kind of reminds me, the best way I can, you know, uh, talk about him is he kind of reminds me of Cristiano Ronaldo without the blister and pace that he had maybe a few years back in eFootball or in, P in PES games. That's kind of how he reminds me. Like, I mean, straight off the rip, lads, we're going to see that he goes to 90 finishing with 86 acceleration and 88 physical contact with 92 offensive awareness. Now, that's even given him just a couple of more points into speed, which we don't really need, right? We don't actually need that much into speed. I would say go 80 with the speed and give him one more into dribbling. Obviously, the big, big concern with this card is going to be the dribbling. Um, that's going to be the big one. 
and especially the fact that we do want to get that offensive awareness and dexterity up with the acceleration we don't even need to go to that fully either his balance is always going to stay a little bit low anyway but you might as well i mean if you get that up to 80 ball control that's pretty decent yeah but i think that you know having it depending on how you train him up he goes to 96 very easily no matter how you train him up so yeah for me lads look i would probably end it by saying that um depending on where you are with your squad building journey i would definitely say to check out uh, danilo locatelli and vla as well i would think that the three of them are probably worth it other than that i think it's a bit of a miss rather than a hit so let me know if you guys are going to spin or not i will be streaming today it's going to be a fairly long stream to make up for me not being on the weekend so we will be cracking open a beer and we will be chilling out with you guys in the chat playing some divisions road to glory and some friend matches so yeah i will talk to you in a bit lads don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to check out the stream later i'll be back in a bit peace